So I promised you some example questions about what I call normal factoring, um, factorizing normal expressions. And very quickly, <coughs> this sheet, excuse me, uh, these are the questions you should be asking yourself every time. Is there a common factor? Is uh, it, um, fa can I factorize it by grouping? Or is it normal factoring? And normal factoring, uh, I call it normal because it's the one that occurs most frequently. You have three terms, and the coefficient of your x squared is a one. Now it's not a two, a three, a five, or a minus four, it is a one. Okay, if I look at these five example questions, yeah, is there a common factor for all three terms? Uh, no, it's not. And um, can I factorize any of them by grouping? No, I can't, because with grouping I need four terms. And are they all uh, examples of normal factoring? Yes, they are, because my x squared, all of them, is 1. Okay. So, so while solving these questions, I will not be asking myself these questions every time out loud, but you should. Yeah? So whenever you get a question, just one of them, you should be asking yourself, is there a common factor? Can I factorize, factorize by grouping? Or is it normal factoring? And then you notice, yes, it's normal factoring. Okay. So here we go, a little bit quick now because I'm sure you are already a lot better at this um, than what I think perhaps. Um, it's normal factoring, so I'm going to put those brackets there already, x, x, uh, and I'm looking for two numbers there, it's a puzzle. But if I multiply those two numbers, I should get my constant there, so the 12, and if I add those two numbers, I should get an 8. So it's a puzzle, figure it out, what do you think? Well, perhaps... If you don't see it, you make a factor tree, 12, 1 times 12 is 12, but with a 1 and a 12, I can't make an 8. 2 times 6 is 12, you, I can make a 6 or an 8 with a 2 and a 6, plus 2, plus 6, yeah? Quickly check that, x squared, yeah? 6x plus 2x is 8x, and 2 times 6 is 12, yeah? Again, I have explained all of this in my previous video, eh? so make sure you've seen that. Okay, fantastic. The second question, it looks the same, but it's not, because it says minus 8x. It is an example of normal factoring, so put those brackets there and those x's, but be careful now with the signs, okay? If I multiply my two numbers, I get a positive 12, but if I add them, I get a negative 8. Minus 2 minus 6, and that's why we always check our work, okay? x squared minus 6x minus 2x is minus 8x, and minus 2 times minus 6 indeed is a positive 12, because the experience is that when students are factorizing the normal, uh, this, this type of factoring uh, question, as soon as the signs are different, yeah, or as soon as negatives come into play, students make mistakes. Yeah? I don't know why. Well, I do know why, because they don't check their work. And that's why we should always check our work, because it's not just about writing something down, it's about writing the correct thing down. Okay? And if you check your work, you will always write down the correct thing, yeah? because you will spot your mistake. Next question. They're both positive. It's normal factoring. So two sets of brackets, x, x. Multiply 36, and if I add my two numbers, I should get 20. Now let's make a factor tree of that. Yeah, so on a piece of scrap paper, 36. Well, one times 36, yeah, but it's not gonna make me a 20. Yeah? Two times 18, 218, fantastic. I'm there already, both positive, two, 18. That's it, because two plus 18 is 20. Check that, x squared, 18x plus two x, 20x, two times 18, 36. Oh, negatives, negatives, careful. Yeah, it is normal factoring, so x, x, but my multiplication is a negative. So that tells me that one of my numbers is positive and the other one has to be negative. Okay, so I'm just putting those signs there, okay? Multiplied, I should get 12. Yeah, or minus 12, but I'm just looking for it. One times 12, can I make a four? No, two and a six. I can make a four somehow, but which one is positive? Is the six positive or is the four positive? And that's why we check. Considering I'm looking for plus four X, my larger number should always be the positive and my smaller number the negative. But don't remember those things. Just check your work. X squared minus two X plus six X is four X. 
and six times minus two in liters minus 12, yeah? So just check your work and you will be fine. All right, last one, again, a negative, a negative there. It's normal factoring, x, x. My multiplication is positive. The addition is negative, that means, but don't remember it, but it means that both my terms need to be negative. Because a negative times a negative is gonna give me a positive, but if I add them, I'll get indeed a negative answer here in the middle. Okay, 42, one times what is 42? Well, one times 42, but that's not gonna give me a 13. Uh, two times, what is it, 21? It's not gonna give me a 13. Three times, uh, wow, I should be uh, able to do that. What is that, 14? Three times, the whoop, yeah, that is correct. But is that gonna give me a 13? No. Four times nothing, five times nothing. Six times seven is 42. And with a six and a seven, I can make a 13. Minus six, minus seven. And I check that. So perhaps you had two positives there, or a positive and a negative. That's, well, it's wrong, but it's fine. But, but if you check your work, you will notice that you've made a mistake, yeah? And then you're gonna change your signs. X squared minus seven X minus six X is minus 13 X and minus six times minus seven is a positive 42. Okay, so we are factoring expressions. We are putting it in the brackets. Is there a common factor is the first question you ask yourself. Can I factorize it by grouping is the second question you ask yourself. And then the third question is, is it normal factoring with a coefficient of one for my x squared term? And by looking at those example questions, be careful when you have negative signs, okay? It's not more difficult, you just have to take a little bit more care of your work. Find me on my Facebook site or on my Twitter and ask me your questions. Go to my website, explainingmaths.com. You can ask me questions there as well. If you have an interesting example of a factoring question, share it with us, yeah? And I will make a video for you, yeah? Because there are loads of interesting examples. These are just uh, five of them. Um, okay. So go to the next video where we are going to do some extra normal factoring. I call that extra normal factoring because it looks the same as what we've just done, but now the coefficient is not one of the x squared. Bummer, I'm gonna show you how to do it. See you there.